Hi. I'd like to talk to you today about uh, inheritance as a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming, its use in Python, and also uh, tips and tricks for using inheritance in Python in object-oriented programming in the object-oriented programming paradigm in 601. First thing I'm going to do is give a really quick crash course on inheritance uh, to catch you up to speed and also so that you're clear on you know, what I mean when I say something like uh, parent class. And also, uh, I'm going to address the sort of little nuances of using inheritance while programming uh, in an object-oriented fashion in Python. A lot of the code in 601 is object, it uses the object-oriented programming paradigm, and a lot of the code in 601 will inherit from parent classes. So, uh, you know, this is part of the motivation for you know going through a quick review and then also indicating. Uh, the most common slip-ups and also the most significant things that you may or may not have seen from other languages. All right, first, uh, let's talk about, let's, you know, crash course on inheritance. Let's look at the board. Inheritance is the idea that you can arrange objects in a hierarchical fashion such that uh, very, very generalized or basic things that is, are true of uh, a whole group of objects uh, can be specified at a higher level, and then you can work your way down to progressively more specific levels. The most, the most formal uh, encounter you've probably had with this thing is uh, that that approach uh, is the biological taxonomy, right? Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Every species has all the properties of that particular genus. All the all the genuses of a particular family have the properties of that family, and so on and so forth. That's a very concrete example, but I find it a little boring. So I'm going to talk about dog breeds instead. Um, you're probably familiar with the fact that golden retrievers are a type of retriever, and that retrievers are a, different, are a particular kind of dog. You can make generalizations about goldens based on what you know about dogs, right? Like all dogs bark, all dogs have uh, four legs if they you know, aren't uh, injured or uh, have some sort of uh, congenital defect, that kind of thing. And um, Goldens also have all the uh, properties of retrievers, right? They are capable of uh, going and catching um, game that you've either shot or possibly like chase it down and bring it back to you. Um, so they're bred to have you know, very particular properties. Goldens are also bred to have very particular properties. Um, and those that are very specific to goldens are the, define the difference between a golden versus a retriever in the general sense. Likewise, when we want to make objects that have very particular properties, but also share general properties with other objects, we're going to create a new category of object and put, those, put the specifics in that very specific category and then take the things that we can generalize and put them in more general categories so we don't end up re rewriting a lot of code or we end up reusing code but not copy and pasting it everywhere because that's annoying. The other major advantage of using inheritance is that code is more intuitive. You can, you can make references to the same piece of code all over the place, but it's not as, it, it's not as intuitively accessible to, to you know, do that over and over and over again, right? It's really convenient to think of the fact that golden uh, could be a subclass or a subtype of retriever, and that retriever could be a subclass or a subtype of dog. Uh, when I talk about when I talk about this relationship in terms of object-oriented programming, uh, when I talk about when I talk about these categories in terms of object-oriented programming and when you're actually looking at code, goldens are a subclass or child class of retrievers, and retrievers are a parent class or superclass of goldens. Likewise, dogs are a parent class of retrievers. So now I've defined my terminology and also hopefully given you a very, very, very quick review of inheritance. Now I'm going to talk about the specifics in Python. If I turn over here, I've written up a very short class definition for a dog, right? Every dog has the class attribute cry. Every dog has an initialization method that gives every dog a very specific name that is passed in when you initialize the dog. 
and every dog has access to the class method greeting, which returns a string that says, I'm whatever the name of the dog is, and also the specific cry, which in this case is actually the class cry. If you're unfamiliar with uh, using the plus in terms of strings, it's just a concatenator. Um, so you know, play around with that in idle if you're confused. Uh, I would recommend copying all of this into idle and then playing around with uh, a particular instantiation of dogs, in this case, Lassie. Um, if you look at lassie.name, you'll end up going after self.name, which is specified when you initialize the object. So Lassie's name is Lassie. Likewise, if you were to, if you were to type in lassie.greeting, open paren, close paren, and hit enter, you should get a string return that says, I'm Lassie, comma, bark. Mostly this is to familiarize you with object-oriented programming in Python in the general sense. Now we're going to look at what happens when you want to set up a subclass. If I set up class retriever and I want to inherit from the superclass dog, I'm going to pass in dog this in the same syntax that I would use if it were a function and I wanted to pass in a parameter. If I wanted to inherit from multiple things or multiple classes, I would put multiple classes here. Right now, we're just going to inherit from dog. Note that I have no code here. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty much meant to explicitly specify the fact that Retriever is not actually going to introduce any new properties to dogs. Their types are going to be different. So if I create something that's a retriever, it will be of object type retriever, versus if I create something and say dog, open paren, close paren, it's going to be of type dog. But what happens when I create a retriever, and as an aside, if you know who Benji is, I know he's not a retriever, but you know, bear with me here. If I create a retriever, it's first going to look for an initialization and in any other uh, methods or attributes in the uh, retriever class definition, run any code that's here, and then go to the parent class and run all the code here. So even though Retriever did not have any explicit code underneath it, I can still interact with the object Benji the same way that I interacted with the object Lassie. It has all the same methods and all the same attributes. So there's basic inheritance. And I will make it another aside that if you're doing this, you probably don't need to create a subclass in the first place. This is, you know, if, if you're designing your own code and you're trying to think about what the best way to organize things is, if you have to create a subtype or a subclass and there are no new methods or attributes or no different ways of addressing those methods or attributes, then this category is probably actually just this category. You may want to make a difference so that you can do interesting things with type checking. I think that's the only thing I can think of that would justify it. And I might be wrong. Uh, you know, Python gurus out there should correct me. But um, a thing to keep in mind. So we've done the first half of our inheritance. We're going to inherit one more time and create a class for golden retrievers. Once again, I've got my class definition and my indication that I'm going to inherit from Retriever. I don't have any initialization or uh, attribute assignments. I only have a definition for greeting. So what happens here? Well, the first thing we always do is look for an initialization method. Golden doesn't have one, so it's going to check the Retriever class. Retriever doesn't have one, so it's going to check the dog class. The initialization method is here. So when it, when it runs the initialization method, it's going to run this code. The first thing that's going to happen is any, any code or any attribute assignments or method uh, definitions here are going to be considered the canon, or you know, the, the first thing that any golden is going to reference. 
So greeting is going to be executed before greeting used in any other place. You notice the only difference between this greeting and the dog greeting is that oh hi uh, has been prepended to the phrase. And the way that we end up doing that is we refer to, we concatenate, and then refer to the superclass. And once again, we have to pass in the explicit argument self when we're talking about a class definition. Later, when you actually instantiate an object and uh, you know, use your friends, you're not going to have to put self as an argument. It'll get confused. We'll go over that in a second. So let's say I create a golden retriever, Sydney. I'm going to pass in one argument, which is the name. We're going to consider all the definitions here first, which means that goldens are going to have a method for greeting that is specified here. It's going to use the method for greeting from retriever. And we could, we could put in anything here, right? We could put dog.greeting. We could put in like some other function that uh, is in the same environment as class golden. But here we can explicitly access the superclass that we defined here. We're going to head over to Retriever to see if there are any additional uh, methods or attributes that are a consequence of being a subclass of Retriever that we need to add to our definition. And we just hit the pass. On the other hand, Retriever inherits from dog. So once again, we have to jump over to a superclass and grab any attributes or methods that are defined there as well. So all the way back over to Sydney. When I call sydney.greeting, the first thing that happens is that I look in the most specific subclass, or whatever my object type is, and see if there's a definition for the method. Because there is, I'm not going to use dog.greeting. I'm going to use golden.greeting. Golden.greeting says, return a string that says, oh, hi, and also append it to whatever retriever.greeting returns. I go over to retriever. It's not here, but I still have a reference to dog. I go over to dog. It has a method for greeting, and it says, I'm Sydney Bark. So the final return type should be, oh, hi, I'm Sydney Bark. This concludes my basic overview of uh, inheritance, uh, with ob inheritance of object-oriented programming in Python for 601. Uh, next time, I'll review some interesting features in Python that are actually from, uh, originated in uh, earlier languages, and also uh, particular things in aliasing that people that are new to Python or people that are new to programming uh, find especially confusing.